to go somewhere and I would be winded and sweaty just trying to put on my socks. It doesn't have to be that way. And, you know, at least what I've discovered in my journey is that, you know, that progressive chronic decline that that's optional. Hello. Good morning. Today I'm talking to Charlie Darth Carnivore. So my first question, my first question is, um, Darth Carnivore, who are the Jedi? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So it's just a name uh, that was available on YouTube. So I <laughs> took it. <laughs> okay. That's hilarious. That's very funny. Yeah. Well, then that answers that question. So uh, now to get down to business, you had type two diabetes and mm -hmm. um, how did you resolve that? Yeah, so in November of 2021, I was officially diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. I had a 6.1 A1C um, of fasting glucose of 102, and wow. I was probably north, a little bit north of 410 pounds. And, you know, wow, I, that's I, so crazy. Sorry. No, that's crazy because yeah. look at you now. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'm only 5'7 on a good day, right? So I'm very. <laughs> very round. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. So from November 21 to 2021, I kind of thought about it for a little bit. Um, you know, I was having trouble, uh, just with basic movement and, and, and energy. Right. So I would wake up, um, and you know, it's time to go somewhere and I would be winded and sweaty, just trying to put on my socks. You know, oh, wow. I have to use like a shoehorn to put the shoe in. I would eventually have to use a sock assist device because, you know, I had a big gut in the way I couldn't reach my feet. So, um, wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I didn't even know there were such things. I, I didn't either. But uh, when I was getting bigger, I had to figure out um, how to accommodate my bigger size, you know, mm -hmm. so I had to use a lot of tools meant for other purposes you know i think it's mm -hmm. meant for people with actual you know disability type issues but um you know it occurred to me that obesity was becoming you know that that kind of issue for me so um you know you can imagine that if i'm winded and sweating just putting on socks on in the morning you know i'm having trouble moving throughout the day just basic movements just getting up to and from mm -hmm. um you know i had to when, when I would go out in public, I would, or go out to like a restaurant, I would make sure to, you know, not sit in the booth because, you know, unless I was wow. you know, going to dinner with someone extremely skinny so I can push the table all the way to their side, <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> um, you know, and one time I had to go fly for business, I had to um, buy a seatbelt extender myself. So I didn't have oh, wow. to, that way I could avoid the embarrassment of having to ask in public. Um, so oh, I was wow. in five X t-shirts, I don't know, 54 inch waisted pants. Um, uh, just really operating from a state of low energy. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, every day I would kind of start off my morning with, you know, what's the least I can do physically to get by through the day. So, you know, you're not, Wow. Not really living. You're just trying to get by, you know, day right. in and day out. And then, you know, how, how you get to 410 plus pounds is, you know, you obviously. Yeah, that was a question. How do you get yeah. to 410 plus pounds? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. So you eat a lot of the processed uh, foods. Um, that mm -hmm. would be kind of a, one of the high points of your day. And you just keep doing it day in and, and day out. So, you know, I think. Wow. Yeah, so a lot of, um, you know, the typical fast food places, uh, you know, the meals, you know, after taking that first bite, you know, you kind of lose control after that, mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. So um, it really accelerated during COVID just because everybody oh, wow. was on lockdown mm -hmm. and things that I wouldn't do in public, like I wouldn't necessarily eat a lot in public just because other people are there. I would do that at home in private, right? So sure. with COVID, that made it e easier to do that secretive, you know, binge eating behavior. Essentially. Yeah. And the food, it gives you, you know, a nice high for a little bit. And then, you know, <laughs> yeah, good dopamine response. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was your biggest go to uh, of ultra processed food? It was definitely Culver's. Oh, okay. That's, that's like, I've, 
I've seen that in Florida and it's in Indiana, I guess. Yeah. And that's like just a fast food place or is it like a, like a, just a chain, a diner chain? It, it's a chain of restaurants. Um, I don't know. I think it's pri primarily based out of Wisconsin, but oh, um, okay. they make like the butter burgers and mm. you know, have everything else, including ice cream. So I would get all, <laughs> all of that. And then some, um, yeah. so yeah, COVID really kind of accelerated that, but it's, um, one part of the story I never really told you uh, much about just because I was trying to type up something really quick on my sure. phone. Yeah. Was in 2008, 2009, 10, around there, um, I had actually done keto, you know, low carb mm. one time. So I had gone from 350 pounds down to 200 pounds in about 12 months. Okay. Months and then I sustained it for a year afterwards. So I have a oh, nice. picture I can present here real quick. Sure. Um, great. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, so, let me put it up here. So this oh, yeah. is 20, 2010. Well, yeah, this is about uh, 2012. So the one on the left is me at 350 pounds. I was, okay. I don't know, maybe 20, late 20s. Or so yeah. I think I was in 3X, about ready to get into 4X t-shirts there. Um, yeah, and then I found low carb keto, you know, primarily through Dr. Michael Eads and then, um, you know, Mark Sisson, the, the primal blueprint. So once okay. I figured out the carbs were the issue and not, you know, just the calories, I really excelled um, yeah. on that eating. So I went from 350 down to 200 pounds. Um, on the right there. So this is you at 200 pounds? You look great. Yeah, that's me at 200 pounds. Um, okay. This was like 2012, I want to say, right? And okay. then I've been that for a year. So, yeah. Um, in, in that, on the right, I was in small t shirts, um, 30 inch waisted pants. So I had gone from like one end of the uh, extreme in terms of men's clothing <laughs> sizes down to the other. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah. what triggered or what, why, why did you stop? Did something happen in your life? Like what went on that you it guys wasn't did? like a single traumatic event or anything, but yeah. what I was doing, uh, was the first time I was doing keto, low carb, I was having a reward meal once a week. Right. Okay. So I would, you know, have that, uh, you know, high carb meal or whatever, going out to eat with friends and, and whatnot. So that was my way of embracing or dealing with uh, addictive tendencies to hyper processed food is just, I would embrace it. Right. And then yeah. I would fast the next day, um, you know, eat pretty strict, low carb the rest of the week. And as a reward, I would reward myself with, you know, a hyper palatable processed meal. Right. Yeah. So, but I couldn't really argue with the results. I kept losing weight that way or maintaining. So mm -hmm. I kept doing that. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, at the time I didn't have a kid. My wife was going to school at night. So I was pretty much, you know, kind of a bachelor for, for a little bit. So I you know, got up to 200 pounds, uh, maintained it, obviously increased the muscle mass and stuff. Um, I would yeah. exercise a lot throughout the week. So, you know, in, in retrospect, that's kind of like, you know, you getting from point A to point B safely in, in record time and then deciding, you know what, I, my tires really haven't been slashed in a while. Let me go slash it real quick, repair it, <laughs> and continue on my journey. So, yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, because the results were pretty good, um, I kept doing it. However, um, you know, throughout the week, I would be trying to get back into ketosis. You know, obviously, after you sure. eat a whole carb meal, you're out of ketosis. Guilt would fuel my workouts. So I'd work out extra hard in the gym, you know, throughout oh, wow. the week, uh, try to be extra strict, strict on my diet and stuff. And then, yeah. you know, over time as, um, you know, life happened, you know, growing a family, wife's coming home from, you know, got done with school at night and, you know, she's wanting to do stuff in the evenings. Um, you know, one, one reward meal turned into two, then into a whole day and then a weekend. And then, you know, um, I think my body just got tired of trying to do that strict routine the rest of the week. And so, mm -hmm. you know, from 2013 to about 2020 or so 
it was kind of a slow and steady weight gain of, you know, five, 10 pounds a year or something. And then it, that exploded in COVID to the point where sure. I basically doubled my weight, more than doubled my weight because I was at 200 pounds and then got to 410 pounds and wow. a lot of that during COVID and stuff. So, wow. Um, was it like a lot of Uber Eats and like just because you couldn't go out yep. anywhere? And so yep. were you working also during COVID or was it just like Netflix full time? <laughs> yeah, no, I was working um, full time as well. It was oh, okay. remote, remote work, yeah. essentially. So, OK, um, back when everybody was, you know, kind of locked down in that. So, I mean, yeah, it was great in that I didn't have to make commute. Um, sure. It was good work or you know, in between work. I would, you know, food was much more easily accessible. <laughs> so sure, sure, I yeah, I understand. Drive out to get it or have someone deliver it uh, to me. Mm -hmm. um, and those were just kind of sucky times for everybody. And, uh, you know, one sure. bright spot uh, seemingly was those hyper palatable foods that would give you a nice bump, temporary bump during the day. So, yeah, I understand. And uh, when did you find out? you had diabetes you said that earlier but now sorry yeah. i don't remember sorry yeah, it's not a super straightforward story but it was november 2021 so i sat with oh, that okay. diagnosis i thought about it for a little bit you know my approach between november 2021 until about may of 2022 was well maybe i can just figure out how to live bigger and stuff. You know, I've already lost weight a bunch of times and, you know, maybe I won't do it again, but, you know, I just had more of more of those rock bottom moments. You know, it wasn't just mm -hmm. about the weight, like, you know, in, in weight loss, we always talk about the non-scale victories, but right. the opposite of that would be like your non-scale fails. Like, right. you know, um, as my daughter was growing and, and getting bigger, you know, I would, be scared to play with her on the floor work, which is where she likes to play because mm -hmm. I was afraid I couldn't get back up without, you know, being in a pile of sweat, basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> things were yeah. getting harder and harder. And, you know, finally one night I said, you know, that, you know, enough, what if, what if, you know, part of me got some of it right back then, but we just cut out the reward meal because that would be, underlying kind of all consuming right so i right. enjoy the meal right it, it'd be enjoyable for about 15 minutes while i was you know waiting for it and eating it but then i'd spend the rest of the week just kind of being super strict about you know eating and exercising um just to get back into you know how i felt before the the reward meal right Especially, what if i just cut that out so that's yeah. all i would do um, when I started doing keto again in June of 2022, um, okay. was I just focused on not having, you know, quote unquote, a reward meal. But, um, you know, the second time doing keto, there's a lot more keto products out in the scene than there was, you know, 10, 12 right. years ago. Exactly. 10, 12 years ago, like your dirtiest keto product out there was like quest bar and they were starting to come out they weren't very mm -hmm. good and they were very expensive at the time so <laughs> yeah um, so, so you know you, you kind of do the net carb concept um you know years later there's just a lot more things out there but you know for where i was at 410 pounds struggling with low energy and you know mobility type issues um you know, where I was at back then was, like I said, going to eat out to Culver's. What if I just got different buns, um, you know, instead of the normal buns and you know, just cut mm -hmm. out the fries, just kind of meet myself where I was at. So if I was eating, you know, basically a standard American diet, could I ketify that? And, yeah, um, you know, for the first six months or so, I would lose 75 pounds because even wow. though that's dirty keto, um, where I was back then at 410 pounds, that was a significant upgrade over what I was eating. Sure. Um, so kind of, you know, partake of, you know, the Quest bars, the uh, the Rebel ice creams, ice cream yeah. and stuff like that. So I never feel deprived in any sense just because I was getting something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I even found a way to make popcorn low, you know, keto, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, because you subtract out the, the fiber. So I would find kernels that were high fiber content for, you know, a couple of tables. Oh, that's very funny. Just go <laughs> that way. Yeah. 
coconut oil and then ghee and you know salt. Yeah. And, you know, it was really good. But um, yeah, so I did that for about a year. Um, you know, or sorry, for a couple of months, I lost sixty or seventy-five pounds, and within six months, five or six months, wow, I was doing that. I wasn't exercising. I, I knew that. You know, I needed to get to the point where I can put on my socks without, you know, assistance and without being sweaty. Right. I can do, you know, home chores, home chores without getting winded or, or sweaty. So um, that's kind of what I would focus on. My activity was just doing house chores or just getting myself ready, you know, for five, sure. six months before I joined a gym. A um, couple of months into my keto journey, they had, I had a slight curveball thrown my way. They, they found like blood in the urine, they couldn't really figure out what was going on. And then mm. I had a suspected kidney stone attack. Okay. Okay. Uh, kidney stone episode. So yeah. um, they could never really find it or find out what was wrong. I eventually had to get scope to see, you know, make sure there was no cancer or anything. There wasn't. Um, oh God. They, they suspected it was a kidney stone and it just passed without me noticing is kind of what they oh, suspected. Okay. But uh, what I drank the night before all this happened was like Diet Mountain Dew. So from that point forward, it made it really easy for me to quit the, the diet sodas, right? So oh, that, good. Was, that was a pretty, pretty huge because I didn't think I could live without, you know, being caffeinated with, you know, something sweet in, in right. my, my mouth all the time. So, so that was kind of <laughs> eye opening that I could quit diet sodas altogether. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, that combined with, um, you know, I would check my fasting insulin because, you know, Dr. Barry, Dr. Saladino, they were all kind of making a big deal up about it. So in January of 23, I took my fasting insulin, you know, doing dirty keto, cutting out the diet sodas, and it was 15.6, which is a lot higher than either of them. You know, oh, wow. As, as optimal. So, yeah. Um, so that uh, eventually led me to convert from keto to carnivore. Okay. In June of 2023, that's when I went full carnivore. I cut out. Oh, so like a year ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. A little over a year ago. So. Yeah. So by that time, I had lost 130 pounds on keto before I switched to carnivore. Your dirty keto, but that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I never really encountered a stall just because I was. I don't know. I seem to do something different every month. You know, it wasn't necessarily a challenge, mm. but it was just kind of out of curiosity. So I told you about that kidney stone incident. So like one month yeah. I would like cut out soda and then another month yeah. I would see like, okay, could I cut out, uh, you know, eventually cutting out the keto treats, um, and sure. then pretty strict carnivore, cutting out every, everything that has seed oils in it. Um, I've gone in phases where I've gone like in and out of lion just to see if I can do it, cutting out the cheese, cutting out the eggs and yeah, and I can if I need to. Um, but it really helped with the cravings for hyper processed foods, like even the, the keto ones, right. um, because, you know, when I was doing dirty keto. I would still have keto treats, but sure. I feel like when you're getting a knockoff copy of the real thing, you always want the real thing eventually <laughs> because your body, yeah. is, you know, it's, not, <laughs> the real thing. it's but, not the real garbage. It's the fake garbage. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so I've lost, you know, 50 pounds on carnivore. So I'm up to 180 pounds lost altogether. That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. Um, can I ask, I still have two questions. So mm -hmm. I understand you're doing dirty keto. Were you eating like tons of salad by any chance or no? Were you eating salad and vegetables or just like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. So I would have, um, I don't know. So rice is like a big part of like how I grew up and stuff. So like they had yeah. like frozen rice broccoli. So I would have rice. Broccoli, oh, okay. Okay. Um, you know, with, with stuff. Um, I wouldn't. So that would be my primary vegetable as, as well as red onions, because I just like red onions on, you know, if I'm making a pizza or sure. putting on an, on a burger. So it's primarily broccoli and red onions. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And um, then, you, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was wondering, did you ever have any gut issues with the vegetables? I mean, those two vegetables? No. Oh, okay. Fine. Yeah. Not really. Those <laughs> were something you need to you know, digest stuff and move things along. So I yeah. mean, 
I remember hearing about, uh, well, it wasn't called carnivore in like 2010, 2012. I, I think no. I just knew it as like zero carb. So right. I'm like, well, okay, I know it's possible, right? Because carbs are yeah. non-essential. But right. I, I kind of thought that was crazy back then just because I still hung on to that, that fiber, uh, the idea that you need fiber. So, right. Um, but, you know, I was watching, you know, while I was doing keto, I was kind of watching a lot of the carnivore content. I think Dr. Anthony Chafee's, um, you know, Plants Are Trying to Kill You uh, <laughs> lecture video was kind of eye-opening because at first I thought it would just be kind of like a joke lecture because, you know, yeah. you think plants are trying to kill you. But the funniest part was he was actually pretty serious, like when you watch the, the lecture. But sure. he brings, you know, a lot of great points that, you know, maybe plants don't want to be eaten and, you know, not just by humans, but just by, you know, herbivores in general. So they sure. connect all these defense mechanisms because they can't move. And, you know, for some people, it causes issues and stuff. So, you know, from Dr. Anthony Chafee, I kind of got the idea. It's like, oh, maybe you don't need vegetables to be optimally, you know, healthy and stuff. So his videos really helped um, as well as just kind of showing how digestion works and, and stuff like that. It kind of helped ease my fears that I can let go of the broccoli. Because <laughs> I held on to the broccoli because I thought it was good for you ever since I was yeah. a kid, you know? So, sure. so I felt liberated in a way because, you know, in the eighties, you know, Dr. Anthony Chafee's around my age. He's like, you know, mid forties, I'm you know, right. uh, 41. So grew up in that era where you know your vegetables are good for you and mm -hmm. i was also part of the clean plate club so uh, <laughs> you know, i'm glad my parents didn't push the, that the, 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 the dinner table unless all your food was eating including your oh vegetables. man <laughs> so stressful <laughs> yeah I mean, that was the received wisdom at the time um you know so yeah. you know, parents enforced it and so i've always kind of not liked having to eat vegetables, but I hung on to it for a long time just because I still thought it was necessary. But you know, Dr. Yeah. these videos kind of helped put my mind at ease on that. That you know, I'm not gonna go off the deep end by not eating vegetables. And then, right, uh, red onions, I was like, well, okay, I, they don't seem to cause me an issue. But when I was doing a CGM experiment, self experiment, I found yeah. that um, whether it was cooked or cold. By itself, it would raise my blood glucose to like 130, 135 on its own. So it's like, oh, wow. Oh you my know? gosh, that's so interesting. It would do that to me. So um, so I was like, well, okay, that that's not really in line with my goals of wanting to lose body fat. So right. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. Oh, that's crazy. I got to open. <laughs> Yeah, one thing I would recommend um, that I learned the hard way with CGM is just to make sure that whatever CGM you want to go with, make yeah. sure the app works with your phone. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Because if you don't, you have to buy a separate receiver. Mm, yeah, okay. I've seen, like I've seen that. Where you have to like put it here and yeah. look at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good so. point. I'll, I'll do that. Okay, I have a question. So, good. You were doing dirty keto. You lost a ton of weight. Um, then another 50 pounds on carnivore in the last year. Do you notice, what other differences do you notice from being dirty keto to carnivore, like physical or mental? Uh, so it's primarily the, the cravings that I've known. There's two things that one is the, the cravings. Okay. I would not want to, um, make, I don't know, keto junk food items. So, oh, um, okay. So that, that's kind of. So I can walk by like a bakery or other people could be eating a ton of carbs. I could be at, you know, Olive Garden for all I know, or a fancy, you know, Italian restaurant. And it doesn't trigger me like, like it used to. Oh, great. To, right. That's so awesome. I don't really feel deprived because I don't really want it anymore. So yeah. that's taking some getting, getting used to. Um, and then the second benefit from carnivore to, from keto was just more energy in general. So I, I don't know. So I used to have the problem of starting from a state of low energy and trying to figure out how do I get by throughout the day while mm -hmm. doing the things I need to do. But now I kind of start from the standpoint of I've got a lot of energy. What can I do with this in this, you know, the amount of time that I have? So, you know, That's I awesome. wake up, 
I get about six hours of solid sleep a night. And okay. then I kind of wake up uh, before uh, before the sun starts rising, before my alarm mm -hmm. goes off. Um, so crazy, know. right? It's so interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm like, have, before carnivore, would you if you had to wake up early, would you feel like a zombie? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. And, then, <laughs> and now you're you know, just awake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm awake, but not not just awake, but ready to go, ready to yeah. Wait. So it's just a different mindset, different attitude. Um, and I don't partake of any car caffeine, so I've never oh yeah, I've never gotten into coffee or tea. I mean, I like the smell of it, but yeah, you know, when I tried it, you know, like a sip once when I was a kid, it just didn't agree with me, so I never started. Um, at Very all good on coffee or tea, <laughs> and then you know, yeah. I cut out. I cut out um, diet soda when I had that kidney stone, you mm -hmm. know, ever since I had that kidney, suspected kidney stone incident. Um, and it just amazes me that I can wake up ready to conquer the world and I don't have, and I don't, and I don't need any caffeine to power my day. You know, I have That's that awesome. mental clarity. My energy levels are even throughout the day. Um, you know, I, I feel like exercising, you know, it makes, it makes a big difference like when you have a state of low energy, um, you know, where your body's hurting all the time, it's really hard to go into the gym. You require a lot more willpower, right. but if your body's not in pain. It's not sore and you have lots of energy. It's a lot easier to work out and do stuff. So sure. that's, you know, from a positive angle, that's been the biggest benefit from, for me at least going from keto to carnivore is just awesome. having, more energy. I mean, I had good energy on keto, but I, I was, you know, at, on a 10 point scale, 10 being the highest, I was probably about a seven, mm -hmm. seven or eight on keto yeah. right? versus where I was before I restarted the journey at like two or three. Right. Yeah. So significant improvement from standard American to keto, but then on carnivore, it's, you know, like a nine or 10 most days. Yeah, I totally agree. It's like a, it's a different life. <laughs> yeah. Um, totally. Uh, so when did you see that you don't have diabetes anymore? Um, you don't have, you reverse. What are we allowed to really say here? When did you see you reverse your diabetes? Like how far into it? Oh, um, let me see. Hold on. I have like my charts here. So oh, I love that. You're so organized. <laughs> Well, in March, I, well, I would say actually June, uh, just so just last month. And there's a little bit of reason for that. So I think I'm one of those people that on a car, you know, long term or not really long term, but a year on the carnivore diet or at least nine months on the carnivore diet. Um, my red blood cells tend to live a little bit longer. So, okay. Um, so, you know, based on Dr. Ken Berry's advice, I got like a glycated albumin and it showed, you know, perfect results there for tosamine, the CGMs kind of okay. showed the same story where I'm not really spiking anywhere, you know, yeah. because I'm just eating meat and cheese, meat and eggs and sometimes cheese. Okay. Um, and, uh, it was just, so it, it would hover around like 5.5 to 5.7 for like oh, a long okay. time. Interesting. And then, um, I would say uh, June is like the first time that I've gotten two uh, quarterly checks in a row where it's been 5.6. So officially out of the diabetes zone, I mean, I was on metformin. I think I stopped taking metformin three months into carnivore from keto. Oh, wow. Um, Great. So my doctor de-prescribed it. Um, okay. I was on two high blood pressure medicines. And that also resolves um, going from carnivore from keto within three months there. Wow. That's amazing. So, it really is telling when you can like, just, yeah. just get off your meds. It's, it's crazy. And so fast. And so yeah. fast. Yeah. So I, I, so I'd say, you know, as of last month, I've officially, um, you know, have, you know, have beaten diabetes if you base it on the A1C, but yeah, you know, I also took um, some of those alternative measures too, and they checked out okay as well, you know, in addition to the CGM. So okay. um, I, I just know that there's a certain percentage of people on a carnivore diet that will have just longer lived uh, red blood cells. And that helps explain why, you know, the A1C might be a little bit inflated, but um, yeah. yeah, officially I'm, uh, you know, I've been two times where I've been 5.6 or less. 
on the That's A1C. great. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. No, I was, I did, we did some blood work for me and then my A1C was like, I just wanted to check. I've never been diagnosed with that, but I wanted to check. And it, I think, I don't remember, it was like five point something. And then yeah. the three months or six months, like my next one or two blood works, it was like 5.6. And I'm like, this literally makes no sense. Like, how is my A1C higher? How am I just about to touch pre-diabetes? And then I heard that information that yeah. you're, it's possible. The theory is that red blood cells last longer. So I got to do my blood work again because now it's so much yeah. longer and we'll see. That's, um, that's great. I love your success story. It's so cool. Yeah. Um, what did your wife think when you were like, I'm just going to eat meat and eggs and maybe some cheese? <laughs> right. I mean, she still thinks it's a little crazy, but she can't argue with the results. You know, she's like, right. you know, you've, I mean, she's loved me at every size. Um, I mean, I've literally, um, almost been every size since we've been together. She's loved me the same at, at all of them, but uh, she Aww. she enjoys the physique, I will say, and the fact that sure. I have boundless, seemingly boundless energy and things get done around the house, you know? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That. So maybe she's yeah. trying to well. um, but <laughs> Good wife. Know, she, I don't know. So sometimes like she'll tell her friends like, you know, look at my husband, the man that only eats meat, <laughs> you know, <Aww. laughs> like, like I'm a circus act or something, but. Um, oh, that's so funny. <laughs> it's better be than being like the fat guy at the circus. Yeah. The, the yeah guy let me show you um, one of sure. those. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll put it back here. Oh my yeah. gosh. Is this at 400? This was at four, at least 410 pounds. So that's just wow. Well, it probably looks heavier so than 410 pounds. But yeah, that that I was at it, my daughter's birthday party. I helped my wife mm -hmm. uh, organize it and everything. And you know, when when you're heavier, you don't really want to be in a lot of pictures. So you know, this was just kind of taken without me noticing at the time. But I was, uh, you know, five X t-shirts ready to go into six X t-shirts. Um, I was struggling to move around, but I needed to help be there for my wife to help out, you know, organize mm -hmm. the, the birthday party and stuff. So I was struggling. I don't know if you can tell there, but I'm not moving very much, but I'm sweating a lot. So um, you know, I can't really tell the sweating, but I get yeah. that you're very uncomfortable. But I yeah. do love your Super Mario shirt. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. um, wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, my biggest I say is 225. I around there. And that was not fun for me. I'm five four. So it probably looks a little similar. <laughs> you know, the roundness. Round. Yeah. Oh man. I, I can't remember. I think I keep, I just have that number in my head, 225 or 224. And I and I don't know if it was exactly that, but I was up there. Um not before I started carnivore, I was 209.8 pounds when I started carnivore. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, I've only lost approximately 30 pounds. It, it, it fluctuates. So I'll figure out what else I'm going to do. But yeah. in the, in this area, I'm getting, I've gotten some advice from some people, but man, do you feel different oh, <laughs> under <God>. 200 pounds <laughs> or okay. man, you feel so yeah, much better. I'm not I'm not uh, anywhere near like what I was, you know, the first time I was doing keto, but yeah, I'm a lot happier and this is more sustainable uh, for mm. me. So. Mm -hmm. But I'll say like every time I thought I was in maintenance mode, I, my, my body seems to drop a little bit. So oh, wow, that's great. I love that. Yeah. Female bodies are different than male bodies. That's all I can say. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no. And I The women tend to diet a lot earlier than guys do. It's and so stupid. Was, you know, probably the low fat calorie counting. You know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't do, I did some one diet like that. And I think that's what uh, ruined my, I think it might, what it was the beginning of the end of my metabolism. No, it was, yeah. I did a, some diet like that in my twenties, but when I was like 18, this must've been 18. I'm 20, 2003. I was, 20. So yeah, about 18 years old, my friend's like, Hey, let's do this Adkins diet. We literally didn't know what we were doing at all, but we knew that we could eat meat and eggs and like one piece of lettuce, <laughs> 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 something stupid like that, except on Friday night, we could have our, our cheat meal. And uh, yeah. the way we stuck to it was if we cheated, we'd have to pay the other person $20 for every cheat. Oh, okay. <laughs> so 
it was very funny. And we had like, we could have coffee with honey in it. So that was our diet, but you know, being young, but we weren't eating low fat is the point. Like we were eating right. a whole egg. We we're eating hamburger meat. Like, okay. and I wish I would have been smart enough at the time and just stuck to that way of eating. <laughs> right. <laughs> and not when I was like, oh, wow, look at me. I'm so skinny. I'm 18 years old. Look how gorgeous I look. I, and yeah. then not thinking like, actually, I'm doing something that's very healthy for my body. I wasn't thinking that way. It was all like outward appearance. And now I'm done. I got there. I fit my cute little skirt. Um, now let me eat the junk food again. Right. <laughs> and the thing with me is I wasn't, I would eat junk, but it wasn't all the time. And I was a heavy smoker. And so uh -huh. the, the more of the fast food junk food mentality came later when I got pregnant and then, cause I quit smoking at the same time. Oh. And then my, weight went way up it skyrocketed to like highest ever levels for me <laughs> yeah so um yeah then i found carnivore it took a long time but i found it <laughs> i found it and then it took a long time that for me to realize is what i needed um but i wish sometimes you know like you were in your 20s i was 18 i knew how to, i i always knew in my mind since 18 that if i just don't eat the carbohydrates um, I'll be skinny, but I never thought if I don't eat the carbohydrates, I'll be healthy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I, when you were in your twenties and you had that like picture where your shirt says stud muffin on it, um, <laughs> very funny by the way, uh, yeah. were you thinking I'm doing this to look good or I'm doing this to be healthy? Uh, I don't know. It's probably more, more of the look good. Itself. Yeah. So I yeah. was like, Hey, you know, I've, I've kind of reached the mountain here. I've, you know, and then where do, where do I go from there? So that yeah. was, I don't know. And it, it's a little, I don't know, maybe not the best mentality to think like, you know, Hey, I'm going to strive to maintain this, maintain this thing. So I should right. have been looking for a different goal. Yeah. Goal yeah. Or exactly. something like that. So instead of, I know, totally get you know, that. Cause being it's, like, it's like playing not to, it's like playing not to lose. Right. So yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not a, <laughs> You always, attitude necessarily. So. Yeah, exactly. You always need like a good goal in mind. And me and my friend's goal was 30 days and we lost a lot of weight and that was the end of the mm -hmm. game. The game was over. So go back to playing the other game, you know, <laughs> without, right. but later I'm like, okay, I, now we're both trying to handle our health. Oh, and we're losing weight. Great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, it's funny when you reverse your viewpoint on what's important. So yeah, but now it's more towards health, you know, um, yeah. a lot of the people I see in the carnivore space, including some people that are interviewed on, on your channel, they're, they're, you know, 40, 50, 60, and they look, you know, pretty good. So you pretty know, good. For, yeah. <laughs> for their age and where that, where they came from and stuff. So I'm like, well, you know, may, I, I need to start thinking much longer term there because, right. you know, you and I probably grew up with the understanding or the expectation that as you hit your 40s 50s 60s you have this chronic decline you know progressive decline <laughs> yeah. right oh your bones start to hurt uh, you know this this part of your body is not working or, or that other and right you're you're in indiana right yeah okay so i'm from illinois i don't live there now but i'm from chicago and i think okay. indiana illinois is also the same sort of diet <laughs> yeah yeah, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that way. And, you know, at least what I've discovered in my journey is that, you know, that progressive chronic decline, that that's optional, you know, <laughs> you don't have that. to do it that way. But, you know, if you want to, you go ahead. But, you know, in, in the 40s, um, it's kind of a weird age group just because like some people my age are like grandparents. Right. And I have yeah. I have like a nine year old. Right. And then some yeah. people. Uh, in their 40s look like they've lived a hard lives uh, right. they, they look totally. 60 so and then you have some that look you know per, you know about their age or maybe a little bit younger so my wife thinks i've um i look younger you know you do uh, you look 10 years younger from that last photo that you showed me at least no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and i feel it too and um you know i've had a number of other non-scale victories too so it's not just about the sure. weight but um while I was on keto, like my skin would get dry really bad. So okay. my hands and feet would crack uh, and I had to put mm. lotion on it to kind of save it a little bit. I've not had to do that since doing carnivore because I eat a lot more fat. So yeah. I don't know, my body just gets the, the fat that it needs and, and the collagen from the whole foods right. and whatnot. So um, 
I've not really been sick on either keto or carnivore. So, awesome. um, you know, if I've had to take a sick day from work, it's usually to take care of other people. Oh, okay. I understand. You know, so. um, can we talk about like, what exactly do you eat? Because I often forget to ask that question and yeah. people might be curious, like, how did you get those results on carnivore? Like, what were you eating? Yeah. So, um, what I eat nowadays, uh, so like throughout the week, um, I will primarily eat frozen burger patties. You know, I, I like to okay. fry, fry those in the griddle so I can pour the grease back on top of it. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas, you know, if I try to batch make it ahead, that, it's hard to get that grease back. So, sure. um, so hamburger patties, um, I try to find the cleanest hot dogs I can because I mm -hmm. just, those are really nice snacks and stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't really snack though. So it's just part of my one, one meal a day, essentially. So burgers, mm. hot dogs, uh, I like duck eggs, uh, and then I'll, air fry. yeah, yeah. Duck eggs. So, um, I don't know. I think I, I might have been listening to Rick Rick's uh, comments too, one too many times, and I saw a duck <laughs> available in the store. I'm like, Let me go try these, and yeah, back to chicken eggs because it's it's bigger, oh, wow. it's thicker, um, it, it's tastier. <laughs> I feel. Oh so. wow! I gotta go find some. I I like to do videos about like trying weird weird foods or something I've never yeah. tried before. So I gotta find a duck egg. I don't think I've ever eaten before a duck egg. <laughs> it's tougher to crack than a chicken egg, so that, that's okay. one, of the, one of the surprising things. But yeah, yeah, I like to put the like uh, fry the eggs sunny side up in some lard, put it on mm. top of my burger because that helps you know make it nice and moist. So yeah, um, uh, I'll take some beef fat trimmings and fry that in the air fryer. So that's a nice okay. um, thing to have. And then yeah, occasionally I'll have some steak and brisket. So okay, probably. nice. So yeah, that's essentially my rotation of meals throughout my, you know, one meal a day throughout the week. And then uh, every once in a while, I'll throw in like a 48 hour fast. Okay. Um, just to, just to kind of train my body that, you know, if I'm ever in a situation where I don't like the food options available, I can, you know, essentially um, and, and be fine w without it. So on, on those days, yeah. You have to plan to do more because I'm not spending any time cooking or eating food. So I got to oh, yeah. with that extra hour or two. So I got sure. <laughs> to, so I'm busy. Um, yeah. Time. But yeah, that's essentially what I do. And then I'll work out three to four times a week, um, you know, being very cognizant of rest days to not, sure. not do much but besides walking. So nice. Um, I like what you said earlier about like thinking ahead to your like 50s, 60s, 70s mm -hmm. and like thinking about that now because I was walking with my husband and my kids. We There's like a mountain path near us and mm -hmm. I'm like, I need to be able to do this in my 60s. And I was thinking of other people in my life that can't do that, can't do exactly what I'm doing. And so it's good that I'm thinking about that now <laughs> at almost 41. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got to be able to do this how many ever mile hike up the hill up the mountain when I'm 60. And that's a, a great goal. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, I, I think of it like uh, as part of retirement planning too, right? Yeah. Because we usually think about the finances, like you need to have so much, mm -hmm. um, you know, in retirement, but people often seem to forget that, you know, you need to be there in a certain condition too. You know, right. when you're in retirement, are you like decrepit and you know, yeah. falling apart and stuff? Because that, you know, you're going to enjoy old age a lot differently then. But, you know, now I'm like, well, not only do I want to be active, you know, when I'm done working, but, you know, if my daughter has, you know, grandchildren, you know, later on, I want to be able to play right. on the floor with them and not have sure. to worry about getting back up, you know, so. Yeah, exactly. And you've got at least potentially up to 20 years before yeah. you're going to have a grandchild because your daughter's younger. Yeah, but, you know, it's the, it's the same type of planning that, you know, what kind of physical and mental shape do I want to be on in you know, 30, 40, 50 years, you know, because right. you know, I, I don't really don't want this, pro, you know, progressive decline, you know, that's yeah. associated with old age. I want to be able to be truly independent. Um, yeah. You know, I'll carry my own groceries, get up off the floor, uh, mm -hmm. put on my own socks, right, without having any <laughs> totally. <laughs> um, 
and, and I'm able to do those things now. And, and I think the first time I lost a significant amount of weight, I took it for granted, but I don't take it for granted now. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it helps listening to other people's stories because, you know, some sure. people, you know, they have a different weight loss story than not than I do. So, I mean, everybody's a little bit different or right. a, healing, a healing journey. So I'm like, oh, okay. I've never mm -hmm. had that condition. I didn't even know what that condition was, but right. uh, it's just all these things that uh, you take for granted. So uh, the, it's really good to kind of hear other people's stories to kind of right. reinforce the value of feeling good on a daily basis. So mm -hmm. you know, the first time I was losing weight, the reward me, the reward was that meal at the end for mm -hmm. being compliant the rest of the week. But, mm -hmm. but now I wake up with that reward and that reward oh. is longer lasting, you know, throughout the day. The fact that I have, you know, you know, mental clarity, I have boundless energy. I'm not in pain. I'm building muscle. I'm able to be mentally and physically, um, you know, engage with my wife, my daughter, you know, coworkers and friends and stuff yeah. that, that, that is the reward. So, right. you know, when I'm faced with, you know, different food choices, I'm like, you know, look, I feel awesome right now. What am I going to trade that off with? And, you know, you right. It's nothing. It's a good so. question to ask each time you look at something mm -hmm. like, how will this make me feel? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure if I went back to Culver's or, you know, got, you know, like things I normally did, it'd feel good for about 15 minutes, but mm -hmm. it would might take me a while to get back into the state I felt before, you know, considering sure. that. Stuff. So, so I, I really just try to be a little bit more mindful and cognizant of how go good and great I feel because great. Uh, sometimes, you know, as, you know, the heavier versions and, you know, low energy versions of me are in the rear view mirrors. It's hard to internalize what that felt like back then. Yeah. So I have to kind of remind myself and then, um, you know, listening to other people's stories, you know, the, the community, the keto carnivore community is really um, great. I think it's yeah. been, been part of my journey too. So. Um, yeah, me too. I, um, I didn't realize how much I needed it <laughs> to yeah. be able to, do so good so like the youtube channel yeah it's cool it's fun but i have so much fun meeting new people talking to people sharing their stories um it's it's almost more important to me because of that whole community aspect yeah um so we're almost at an hour so i just wanted to ask um is there anything else you'd like to communicate before we finish here uh, I didn't catch the last part. Are you, thinking, are you asking like closing oh, thoughts? Gross. That kind of thing? yeah, closing thoughts. Um, I don't really have much, but I will say like uh, you know from my perspective of having lost uh, 150 plus pounds twice. Um, ah, yeah. You know, I you know the reward meals are not something I would encourage. Um, that's just you know based on my. Mm -hmm personal experience. I mean, if you're not enjoying the way you're doing something day in and day out, you have to fine tune that until you get to a point where you do enjoy it. Um, because, you know, that that's what you're doing 99% of the time, like, you know, you'll hit these milestones, but that's only like 1% of your journey, like you'll hit certain milestones, you've lost certain weight or right. gotten down. But if you don't like or enjoy what you're doing on a day in and day out basis, really just kind of ask yourself, what can I do to make that better? Because it's, right. it's the day in and day out stuff that's going to get you where you eventually want to be. And, um, you know, there, there's going to be some experimentation there as everybody's a, a little mm -hmm. bit different. So just right. kind of be curious about that. You know, if you're not enjoying it. Um, yeah. What I'm saying is just basically um, don't just prioritize the results or the outcome, but also, um, you know, prioritize the process. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Charlie, for talking to me today. I I, I yeah. hope we get your story far and wide for anyone who was in a similar right. position and needs some help. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Alia. <laughs>